uh, we actually launched the new version of our site, like, and so that was live for a couple weeks. Is it now fully out of Webflow into your own setup? 100%. Everything was built with Claude Code using Opus 4.5. The design, the copywriting, everything. There's a lot of prompting, don't get me wrong. We're not even paying for hosting right now. Right. We get like 30,000 site visitors a month. We haven't actually had to pay anything for hosting. Oh, this is gonna be a problem because that looks way simpler than I thought it was gonna be. Happy New Year to you, how's it going? Happy New Year, yeah, good. Just getting back into the thick of things now. So things are good, how about yourself? Good, we, uh, we actually launched the new version of our site like right before the break and so that was live for a couple of weeks and i basically spent this whole week so far just like working on it it's been a dream man it's been so good yeah i, I saw it i wanted to know what your set what your stack is for it and like what how it was created what all the tools are like where you're hosting it and like is it now fully out of webflow into your own setup yep 100 percent. so give me the rundown like what's the setup all right so First things first, React and Next.js. Uh, I use React for anything that I'm vibe coding on the web. A lot of people don't like React for certain reasons and they're entitled to those opinions, but it's extremely popular and LLMs are insanely good at writing React. And so that is the choice for React and Next.js. LLMs are just good at it. Um, and there's a lot of marketing sites out there that use that stack, it's super good. That is one thing. Everything was built with Claude code using Opus 4.5. The design, the copywriting, everything. There's a lot of prompting, don't get me wrong. There's a lot of back and forth. There's a lot of human oversight, but that is how it was built. And then that's all well and good for a static site, but like anyone who's thinking of doing something like that, you're probably, you're used to using Webflow, you're used to a CMS and mm -hmm. that's what you want. You know, you don't want to like give your marketers like Claude code and just tell them to go crazy. I mean, yeah. We do that, but we have a more technical team than like standard marketers, you know? And so for our CMS, we're using something called Sanity. It is a headless CMS. A lot of people ask me, why did you choose Sanity? It's the most battle tested option, similar to why we chose React and XJS. So that is the stack that it is running on and it has been great. And really, if I want to sum up why those things were chosen, again, it's a mixture of what LLMs are good at and what the most battle-tested solutions are. Okay, where's it hosted? Vercel. Ah, oh, yeah, I don't even know how I forgot the host. Vercel, Vercel. And uh, Vercel hosting is amazing. I have been vibe coding things in production for like, I want to say the past year, maybe a little bit more, maybe a little bit less than a year. And I pretty much hosted everything on Vercel, never had a single issue, and we're not even paying for hosting right now. Right. We get like 30,000 site visitors a month. And so far we haven't, we we pay for our Vercel team, but we haven't actually had to pay anything for hosting. Well, let's dive into the weeds of it then, because I do have a lot of questions about it. Excellent. Um, okay, so just let me recap. So Next.js, React for the front end, then Sanity as your headless CMS, and then Vercel for hosting. Yeah. I, I suppose, the first question that I would have is just around the CMS. Um, when you're creating content for like your blog or like different landing pages and all that kind of stuff, how is it being created? Is this something that you do in Claude code or do you have like an interface that you can use to basically populate it? All? Yep. So it is an interface. Um, I could actually see if I can pop that open. The reason why I really like it is actually because I didn't have to explain it to anyone on my team. Uh, they kind of just knew how to use it immediately right yep. off the bat. You just go to like a URL on your site and then you're able to log into it. I log in with Google and then you have... Are you sharing your screen? I'm about to. Oh, I'm yeah, trying yeah. to figure that out right now. There we go. So here's what this looks like. And we've got our collections. So in Sanity, they're called documents and document types. That's like your collections and your items. Um, yep. So we have the document type blog post. And then within that, we have our blog posts and very similar to what you would do in the Webflow CMS. You just go in, add whatever you want to add, write your rich text, meta description, that is it. And this is fully programmable. So the good thing is you see in here how this is at memberstack.com slash studio. Mm -hmm. 
if there's something weird, like I want to change something in the CMS, I want to add some new features to it, I can actually do that, which is really, really cool. Oh, this is going to be a problem because that looks way simpler than I thought it was going to be. So in short, memberstack.com slash studio is essentially the sanity backend instance that was created. So you can log in there and populate data in that database, and then that feeds into the front end that you've created in React. Yep. Super easy to set up too. Super easy to set up. I mean, it's one thing to make something that's easy to manage. Like you could build a custom CM. A lot of companies actually have custom built CMSs for their company that are super easy for their marketing teams to work on and all that stuff. But it's like you spent hundreds of thousands of dollars to build out a custom CMS. Nobody's going to do that. But this was both easy to build. And as you can see, it's easy to manage as well. Yeah. And, and just the flexibility that you get with the Sanity CMS compared to, say, the Webflow CMS with like different content types. But like, what are like, are there like any limitations or restrictions that you have found that are, that you run into there? Nothing, nothing. Now I will say the Webflow CMS when it comes to content types and stuff like that, I really, the only time I would run into any issues with the Webflow CMS was when I was trying to use it to do something that it wasn't made to do. So I've used it as like a backend for apps many times and you can do that. Mm -hmm. But like naturally, it's not made to do that. and You're going to run into issues. So sanity, I have had no issues. That being said, I wouldn't have had issues doing the same thing in Webflow either. Uh, now, the thing about it that's really cool, and I will say I haven't tried to do this yet, so I don't want to go and like give anyone the wrong idea. But if I were to run into an issue, hypothetically, the thing about Webflow is that it is closed source. I, I can't change my CMS. I can change my CMS setup. I can't change my CMS. Whereas I should be able to do that in theory with Sanity. Am I going to need to do that on our marketing site? I don't know. I don't really think so. But hypothetically, I could. Um, I, I mean, like for me, it's kind of interesting because like I use the Webflow CMS a lot for all of like the sites that I create, like the directory sites and even like marketplaces to some extent. And... I mean, like, I'll be honest, Webflow has served me well because, like, you, there are, like, a lot of workarounds, but you're always going to run into issues when it comes to, like, rebuilding the CMS, updating certain things. And also, it's so disconnected from, like, the back end in a way. Like, even though you can, like, connect them to each other, it's kind of the different tools that are kind of disconnected in a way. So what's the pricing like uh, for Sanity? So Sanity, here's the thing. It is, I should be able to self-host it, but we're not at the moment. And so it's like 20 bucks a month per seat. That was what I saw in the pricing, but I just got a bill for like 15 bucks and we have like five or six people on the site. Uh, so right now the cost to running our site is uh, 20 a month per seat in Sanity and 20 a month per seat in Vercel. So that basically leads to it being a, about 200 bucks a month that we're paying for the tool for hosting for everything like that you could get it way cheaper than that again i think you could like self-host sanity and pay nothing but it's not bad for us for for what we're getting out of it it's not bad at all we were paying webflow quite a bit well we still pay webflow a lot of money Ah, interesting stuff. I mean, just as like a basic concept, can you kind of break down the difference between like a headless CMS and like a non-headless CMS? Yes. So basically a headed CMS, let's call it, that's probably not a term and I just probably sound stupid saying it, but uh, it has a head, if you could believe that. As in it has a front end and it's all tied in yeah. to itself. So for example, if you're using Word, you could use WordPress as a headless CMS. You could have your own custom application and then connect it to WordPress and use WordPress as a headless CMS. Or you can use Elementor to build out your front end, in which case everything is in WordPress. So there's not really a clear divide, but like if you're editing your content, your front end in the same tool, then it's not a headless CMS. If you have your CMS as one tool and then you build pages in another tool, headless CMS. So same thing, a lot of people try to do like headless Shopify setups because they don't like Shopify's page editing abilities, but they like the store management abilities. So that's kind of the, the term headless to put it yeah. that way. So in short, if you've got like an, a CMS editor in the tool that you're using, it's not headless. If you're just basically creating it in like 
a terminal or wherever headless essentially yeah. What pretty much, pretty much. If it's separated from the wider part of your site, like our CMS sanity here serves a purpose of being a CMS. That's all it does. Whereas Webflow serves many, many purposes at the same time. Okay. And one of the other things that I'm interested in specifically about like the headless versus non-headless um, CMS is, is that, uh, because I saw an article by one of the Webflow people about it, is that when you're using a headless CMS versus something like the Webflow CMS, one of the challenges that can sometimes come up is that there are so many additional steps that you're going to need to take when you're deploying a new CMS item, for lack of a better way of describing it. So what is like the process and the workflow that you're going through if you or someone in your team wants to create a new CMS item? Okay, so believe this. You go to that studio that I showed you, you create it, you fill out the stuff, you hit publish, it's live. Okay. And, and it goes, it deploys automatically in Vercel and it's just all good to go. It doesn't even need to deploy in Vercel. Oh, okay. So it's just like a direct connection between like your site and the studio. Yep, exactly. No uh, redeployments or anything like that are needed, which is important. Here's the thing, the deployment process is a actually wonderful thing when it comes to like making significant site updates, but I don't want to, we have test cases on our website now, which is super cool. I don't want a test case to run every time we're adding a blog post. It's not going to break anything. We don't need to deploy it. It just pushes straight live to the site. Uh, one issue that I will say to speak on the negative side of things is right now you have to publish it to see it on the site. And once it's published, it's live on the whole site. There is 100,000% a way to not have that be the case, to have a direct staging environment that you can preview and share with people first. We can do that. We can set it up. We just haven't yet. So as of right now, if you click publish on an item, it's live on the site. I love it. Um, oh, okay. This is cool because you, you know what I find interesting about all of this is that like there'll be people who are like predominantly Webflow users who are probably looking at these tools as like an alternative, especially if it can be like a bit of a cost saver, maybe it addresses like some of the limitations. But one of the key challenges is that like when you predominantly use tools like Claude Code is that that visual aspect that you get from, you know, using Webflow just isn't there anymore. But it kind of looks like here that you do have a way to actually see what your site will look like or is this kind of what the studio looks like? And this here is like a preview or is this what you would see on the live side? I think that's the thing. I think they do have a preview built in and there's so many features that I have not yet explored. We basically set it up as a bare bones CMS. They have a lot of different features that, that we need to explore, but all we really wanted was something to hold our content in. That way we don't need to have our marketers pop open Claude code and that's it and it does that perfectly but that's the beautiful thing is it is expandable there's so many things that we haven't tried to implement that we could implement that we're probably gonna implement but we're holding off on that i love it